The Bible says in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 3, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a light and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said three things. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Everybody say, this is my son son. whom I love. love. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. God's love. God's love. Father, we ask that you just speak to us in ways that we haven't been spoken to. God, give us revelation tonight. And what we will give you tonight is ears to hear and hearts to receive. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said amen Amen. and amen. All right. Last week we talked about um, we are gods. And we talked about like I belong to God. He He is who calls me son and daughter and all these fun things. It's good to know who you belong to. But it's better to know that who you belong to loves you. Um, For those of you in relationships, it's good to know you belong to somebody, but it's even better when they love you. Because there's people that belong to people who don't love them. (laughs) Um, We we can belong to somebody and they not love us or care for us. Like, I belong, that's my dad, but he don't love me. That's my mom, but she don't love me. That's my uncle, but he don't love me. Whatever it is. But it is good to know that we serve a God that loves us in its simplest form. Now, love is a funny concept that everybody keeps trying to define. Everybody's saying love is this. Love is an emotion. Love is a feeling. Love is a choice. It's all those beautiful, awful things. (laughs) But love is full of three things that I want to talk about tonight. God's love. Our love is full of a bunch of mess and our preferences. God's love is not full of his preferences. It's full of his promise. But tonight I want us to look at three things. And I want us to write them down. All right, so y'all got your notepads. Not, Not the one in your head, the one in your hands. So I want to see thumbs moving or pens moving, whatever you, if you got a stylist, write with your stylist, whatever it is. All right. First thing, God's love is, write that, and then full of grace. God's love is full of grace. Take your own note. Don't be cheating. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Go get a piece of paper. You're so disobedient. No, um... Hunter came prepared. He said, I'm writing them down physically. Um, You at home, write them physically. Uh, So here's what I want us to see. And the three things we're going to talk about are very important because it's three things that we don't give ourselves. So the first thing is God's love is full of grace. The first thing that we do not give to ourselves whatsoever. We don't give ourselves realistic grace. Look what Ephesians 4 and 7 says. Ephesians 4 and 7, write that. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So if Jesus can give us grace, how come we can't give ourselves grace? If the almighty God can give us grace, what's wrong that we can't give ourselves grace? And when I say grace, everybody be like, oh, grace, you know, I just have no. Think of it this way. The grace to mess up. The grace to mess up. The grace to not be perfect. Some of y'all are chasing so much perfection that is killing you. And it's murdering you. And it's murdering your faith because you're trying to be this big thing that is not realistic. And that's because you don't give yourself no grace. No grace. I remember when I was trying to be everything to everyone. And I wasn't giving myself realistic grace, which would have told me, why are you trying to be everything to everyone? That's stupid. I got to give myself grace. Everybody say grace. Grace Grace to mess up. I'm a mess up. I'm a misspell something. I'm a say something dumb. I'm a forget to go 
go pick up something from the grocery store. I'm going to forget. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I have to give myself grace. Grace as a girlfriend, boyfriend, grace as a um, fiance, uh, grace as a husband, as a wife. I have to give myself grace because grace is what I want to be given to me. Yeah. And if I want grace, I have to give grace. That's what we be forgetting. Somebody just please. <laughs> Do you give anybody else any grace? No, because you stanky. We stanky. We really be like, man, dang, you really like. I, like, listen to us in group projects. We are so just ungrace giving in, gr in group projects. I know so-and-so is going to mess up, so I'm just going to do it all. I'm just going to do it all. I'm already expecting you're going to fail. For real. I'm just being, I know that's a stupid example, but it's something really dumb that we don't do in the simple state. We don't give nobody a chance to even fail. Some of us have brought that into our relationships. We don't even give our significant other the chance to mess up. <laughs> Y'all don't want your significant other to do nothing wrong. You bet not talk to me crazy. I might talk to you crazy after a bad day at work. Expect it. <laughs> It's not geared towards you, but it's coming from my, my yeah, y'all laughing. I know, I know, I feel good. Because, man, like we really don't, we want grace. Well, you should, like when we get yelled at by somebody else, like get like, come on, like I'm trying my best. But when that person tell you they trying their best, you be about to act a fool on them, you a warden. You ain't trying your best. I hope y'all feel it. <laughs> Because for real, we really don't give nobody grace, but it is the one thing, the number one thing that we want from everybody else. We want it from our bosses, from our coworkers. Yeah. We want it from our bosses, our coworkers. We want it from our significant others. We want it from everybody. But it ain't the one thing that we're giving out to everybody. <laughs> nah. Get over it. Get yourself together. What are you broke into? <laughs> I've seen a lot of, I, I've been able to uh, minister to couples. I've been able to counsel uh, people about to get married. And people are funny. They, like, they don't know how to give each other grace. I'm like, do you know that he's not going to wash the dishes just out of thin air? <laughs> do you know that? He's just not a dishwasher. If you are expecting him to just get up and be like, you know what, today I'm going to do all the laundry. He's not going to do it. <laughs> if you're expecting your, your wife to be like, you know what, today I'm just going to, I'm going to cook his favorite meal. No, tonight you might be eating McDonald's after this. Because <laughs> we both had a crazy hard day at work. <laughs> you know what, if you're expecting her that she's just going to be like, you know, I just love him so much. I'm going to clean all his sneakers. I'm going to fold all his drawers. I'm going to just do all this stuff. It's not realistic. And if you go into your relationship expecting that your mate is going to be perfect, then that is meaning that you think that you are perfect. I'm good over here. I don't need you. Oh, ha-ha. <laughs> yes, Lord. Um, be careful, ladies. Be careful of how much you proclaim and listen to other women say that you don't need a man. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. Because you are actually speaking against what the Bible says. You're speaking against what the Bible says. That we are supposed to be joined together in one. Okay? Um... Just like I, now, the only reason I'm, I'm picking on the ladies right now is because we live in a culture where we are picking on men a lot right now. And if we if men of God do not hold up a standard of godliness. We could be very offended by the things that are being said about men in the world. I'm not that offended because I ain't no weak man. I can leave here and be OK. I can go to sleep and be okay. I can watch them talking about some all men ain't this. I'm like, no, all the men you mess with ain't that. That's what I can say. But when I'm insecure, I react to everything that I hear on TV. 
Same thing with the ladies. We react to everything. Ooh, I don't need no man. Y'all know y'all the first ones after one of y'all break up with somebody and you got a man, but you going out with the, I'm just going to support her. <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> Honey, she going through. She chose to go through. No, I'm playing. <laughs> well, sometimes we do choose to go through it. Because men and women, we will be like, oh, like, he just, and he's awful. <laughs> or she'd be like, oh, and he's like, nah, man, she, she cool. And she's awful. <laughs> Give yourself grace to say, man, do I really, I know I'm not great, but like, do I deserve what I'm getting from this person right now? Do I deserve this? I don't want to go into a space I don't want to go into marriage like this, feeling condemned and, and demoted about something. I want, everybody say grace. 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 I need grace. We, like, I got to say it again, like, ladies, be careful. Just going around town talking about something. I don't need no man. Yeah, you do. And he needs you. We need each other. We came from each other. If you take a... So, ladies, you were taken out of a man. You need a man. Okay? That's what, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's not something like, ugh, he would be nothing without me. No, we know you would do great without us, but you're even better with us. Hear me when I say that, because I can feel people's ears tingling like, uh-uh, no, you. I'm talking about you. The ones around, no. You need a man. Key phrase, you need a man. Some of y'all been dating kids. <laughs> Quit blaming stuff on man for the kid that you've been dating. <laughs> for the boy you've been dating. Fellas, learn how to be a man. <laughs> Being a man is okay. The one that God talks about. Not the one that they posterize and put up all of, no. The one that's in the Bible, that's a good one to be. <laughs> good one to be. Having masculinity is not bad. Laws is from the Bible. <laughs> this other toxic masculinity out here, that ain't from the Bible. That's from the pit of hell. You want to be from the pit of hell? No. You want to be from the Bible. So it's good to be a man. It's good. Ladies, you need a, say it with me, man. man. Say, ladies, lady, say, I need a man. Even if you got one saying, I need a man, need a man. <laughs> to remind them, be like, don't turn to a boy. <laughs> I need a man. Fella, say, I need a woman. Say it loud. I need a woman. Because that is the one thing that has been taken from you. That was taken from Adam. He, it was his rib. I guarantee if any of y'all had a rib taken out right now, you'd be on the ground falling out. <laughs> If somebody, calm down, hold on. <laughs> now, I done went down, <laughs> I done went down Lady Street, be quiet. <laughs> I'm on Men's Avenue, <laughs> okay? Men, you need a woman, the one that the Bible talks about. Not the one that you think is sexy. <laughs> you need the one that the Bible talks about, because she's sexy too, <laughs> okay? Because she's a woman of virtue, and she's the woman that's going to pray for you when you don't know where your next job coming from. She's going to pray for you when you, are, when you ain't got no money to your name, and she's going to date you when you ain't got no money to your name. Because she's a woman of God, and she sees the vision in you. She's able to take vision from a man. She won't take it from a boy. So be a man, okay? But give each other grace. Because some of us is, is, is boys working on trying to be a man. Some of us is women, I mean, uh, ladies working on trying to be a woman, okay? Give each other, everybody say grace. 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 God's love is full of grace. Write this down, second point. God's love is full of pace. Pace. So first thing is God's love is full of grace. And I have to give myself grace to mess up. God's love is full of pace. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Rewind. They that wait, slow down. 
slow down. We rush into everything. We want to be there now. We want the house now. We want the wedding now. We want it all to be done now. You got to be careful with now because that now might not be ready for your right now. Got to be careful. Now does not mean good. <laughs> I need it now. I need him now. I need her now. No, you don't. Work on you now. <laughs> you need pace. Slow down. Some of us are trying to be multitaskers and we're not good at it. We're terrible. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm terrible, I'm terrible at multitasking. <laughs> Believe it and receive it. <laughs> I know, if my wife was right here right now, she'd be like, I'm good. No, you're terrible. Oh, you're terrible. <laughs> See there? See there? Terrible. <laughs> She's not good at multitasking. Neither am I. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> and look, he's laughing. He's like, I'm not good either. Yeah, stop it. Stop. You know who it is? I'm going to just say it. Ladies, y'all not good at multitasking. <laughs> Believe it and receive it. Uh -uh, don't clap too loud. I'm coming, I'm coming there. I'm coming down, back down Men's Avenue. Stop it. You're not a good multitasker. I know you want to believe that you are. Look at me in my eyes. You're not good. <laughs> You're not good. You forget. And guess what? It's okay to forget. That's called grace. Give yourself grace. Boy, you cute. <laughs> Give yourself grace. Ladies, the reason why I tell you you're not a good multitasker is because you freak out when you don't get all those tasks done. Give yourself grace. You got other things to do. You got to be a mom. You got to be a sister. You got to be this, that, and third. Some of y'all got to be mom and dad. Stop it. Relax. Give yourself grace. Slow down. Live in a realistic expectation. Do things one at a time. It's not good to multitask. Fellas, where you at? Yeah. You not good multitaskers either. Stop trying to talk to all them women at the same time. <laughs> now, I may not be y'all here, but somebody online, listen to this. Stop talking to all them women at the same time. You not good. <laughs> you going to get caught. Stop trying to be Mr. Every, stop trying to be Captain Save Him. Stop it. <laughs> stop trying to save every woman and you don't know how to save yourself. Sit down. Slow down. Stop trying to be on your grind doing nine different things. You good at nothing. You're master of nothing. You doing everything and you won't slow down to do one thing very well. Stop trying to be the perfect man. He don't exist unless your name is Jesus. Even if your name is Jesus, it don't count. <laughs> okay? Stop trying to multi slow down. We are driving ourselves into the ground because we are going at the pace of the culture instead of the kingdom. Go at the pace of the kingdom. And the kingdom says, but they that wait. Stop trying to run and wait. Stop trying to move and wait. There is wisdom in waiting. They both got a W in it. There's wisdom. There's wisdom in waiting. There's wisdom in waiting to have sex before marriage. There's wisdom in waiting to get married when you have the, the, the necessities that you can do it. You ain't got to move everybody else's pace. Slow down. Slow down. Be realistic. Okay? They that wait. Me and my wife got married with like 20 people in the room, like 40. And guess what? I don't care. <laughs> I don't need to have a big waiting. That's not my pace. My pace is we're going to kick it with these 40, and it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> and I'm going to have a good time. And guess what? I did. I did. We didn't even get to dance. We, we didn't get to do a lot of stuff because we got married during the plague. That's what I call it. <laughs> but for real, I was okay with the pace that God was taking us. He said, slow down. You don't need to spin that tight to make a big old scene for everybody else. As long as I'm marrying her, I can marry her in that dusty field over there with none of y'all over there. All I need is one witness, her, and the rings. Pretty much. 
because we want to put on a show up with our life and all of these things. Like, look how good I'm doing. Look at how much I'm investing over here and investing over here. And, but you can't even sit down and be at peace because you're moving at an unrealistic pace. How can I find peace in a pace that doesn't fit where I'm at right now in life? I can't find peace in a pace that exhilarates past where God wants me to be. I got to be in the step that God has me in. I have to walk as he walks. I have to walk as he instructs. If he tells me to stop, I got to stop. If he tells me to move, I got to move. But if it don't come from him, I can't do it. I treat God like Simon says. God says. God says stop. Guess who stopped? Me. God says abstain. Guess what I do? Abstain. It's that, it's, it's that, 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 all the way. It's that simple. It's that, right there, that part. Stop trying to be the person. Be you. I am 30 years old, and I am so excited to learn about me every single day, every single month, every year. I don't know what 31 going to be, but I'm looking forward to it. 31-year-old me about to be different. I just hope he not fat. <laughs> I'm rebuking a spirit right now. <laughs> but for real, I'm enjoying the pace that God has me at. God ain't, ain't telling me to go do all this crazy stuff. God's telling me, focus on these two things right here. Do these two things well. Stop trying to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. I want to be a master of a few good things. Okay? Y'all with me? Okay. So God's love is full of grace, the grace to mess up. God's love is full of pace. They that wait on the, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm not going to move yet. Pace. Some of y'all haven't renewed your strength because you won't sit down. Some of y'all have not renewed your strength because you don't know how to sit down. You want to be seen and heard, and it's killing you. <laughs> you want to be seen and heard, and it's driving you crazy. Well, I mean, I got I to gotta go do this, and, and, and I got to do this, and, and I'm on my grind. Well, you keep grinding, and you're going to be just like breaks. When, when it's time for you to break, you ain't going to have none. And you're going to slide, and you're going to cause a crash and hurt other people, including you. And guess whose fault it is? Yours. Start taking responsibility for your own mess. God told you to slow down ages ago. I know 50-year-olds who have not concept, who have not grabbed the concept of pace, who are still grinding, and they look goofy. Because they got seven days. Oh, yeah, you know I'm a businessman. No, you're just a bad multitasker. I'm a businessman. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just working everywhere. You sh don't have to. If you would slow down and get good at one thing, you could work at a company and make f six figures. You could be great. You slow down and do one thing. There are people in this room, I mean, like, when I think of people who have really mastered, like, slowing down, and they probably going to think I'm crazy, but being really good at what they do. I think of Terrell, I think of Caroline, I think of my wife, I think of Katie, I think of Jess, I think of uh, Maddie. These are all people who have mastered things, have been like, you know, I'm going to do this one thing, and y'all going to leave me alone. <laughs> I love Maddie. Maddie, like, if you don't want, if, if it don't regard cutting your hair, please, uh, don't add me doing that, no. <laughs> I am a barber, baby. <laughs> She, like, I, I love it about it. She focused, she gave energy to one thing and became a master at it. Are y'all hearing me? She gave one thing, time and energy, and now she's great at it. She can charge what she wants. Imagine if she was trying, and because she mastered that, now she can go learn something else. That's what we'd be missing. We want to be like, I got to learn how to do this, do this, do this. I got to be great at all things. No. Learn one thing, master that, then you can move on. She know how to cut hair now. Now she can go learn how to do eyebrows. There you go. I mean, we were just talking about it. 
she can get you, she already got me trimmed up. I wonder what she can do to my eyebrows. <laughs> and I got good eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I'm black, I got good eyebrows. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I don't care. Y'all decide to come tonight. I'm just saying. But she mastered one thing, and now she can go do something else. Okay? I'm going to use my wife as the example. She mastered doing dietitian things, giving, mastering things like, oh, how do we teach people? She can go do anything else now. She can go do anything else. She can, if she wants to, she can go work for a sports team and be their dietitian. You want to know why? Because she mastered it. Y'all get where I'm going? Okay. Stop trying to learn all, stop trying to be the Swiss Army knife and you don't even got one knife in your packet. Y'all trying to cut everything. Like, oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. And you terrible. Get good at one thing. Pastor Lincoln is not trying to be great at a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to be good at like a few things and be done. Yeah. Be good. Put energy towards the things. And, it's, and it happens even easier when you consult God. God, what do you want me to sharpen my skills in? Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy part. When you invite him, guess what? He answer. He answer. God, what do you want me to, what do you want me to put time and energy into? Because I know if you, here's, yeah. Let me teach y'all something. Y'all ready? The will of God. When you are in the will of God, he is responsible for the provision. Because he wrote it. It's his will. Once you get in your will and your way, guess whose responsibility it is? Yours. You got to find the income for that. You got to find the space for that. You got to figure out how to pay that bill because it's your will. And when you want to ride, ride and holler and kick it in your will, guess what? You got to pay the bill for that. But when I'm in God's will, he paid the bill, he provides the, the income, he provides the space, and he brings so much more. When I'm in God's will, when I'm in God's will, he provides. When I'm in my will, I got to provide. But we don't teach people how to be in the will of God. We just want them to start a business so they can tithe. I've been around preachers like that. Not here, but I've been around preachers like that. They just want people to start businesses that they are not even equipped to start. Listen to me. Oh, Father God, help me say it correctly. You better be careful starting something without God. You better be careful. I would hate to you get it, to get in debt and blame it on God. God, you told me to do this. <laughs> no, I didn't. You told you, matter of fact, you told me that you wanted to do that and you hoped that I would co-sign on it. We want, go, we, got, we want God to co-sign on all of the things that we be doing. God, just please bless this carnal dream. <laughs> please bless this fleshly dream of mine. That's going to, oh, it's not, stop thinking that, oh, well, if I desire something that's not of God. No, no, no. God puts desires in our hearts and it's okay. It's okay to want that car. It's okay to want that house and stuff like that. But if you're going to do nasty stuff to get it, if you're going to do conniving things to get it, if you're going to skip steps to get it, God's not in that. And he's not going to bless it. So stop trying to ask him to. Stop asking God to be in that dusty relationship you're in. He's not going to bless it. Stop asking God to bless you in your singleness when you don't even, <laughs> whoo, my God. Stop asking God to bless your singleness if you won't even read about singleness in the Bible. If you won't even seek out wisdom of how to be a single and grow and learn. God, bless me with a man. He's not going to send nobody. He'll send you a boy. <laughs> Stop, send me a woman. He'll send you a girl. And then you'll blame who you dating as all, all men, all women. Like, mm -mm. you better slow down and say, God, I will walk where you are telling me to walk. Now, all of that, 
is easier said than done, but not really when you actually settle yourself, slow down and say, God, if it ain't from you, rebuke it. If it's not from you, rebuke it. That's something Caroline taught me. She said, I, I ask God to confirm and rebuke. <laughs> and, 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 lis- and listen to the ways and look at the ways that God speaks to you. He's not going to speak into an audible voice, and I'd be terrified if he did. <laughs> some, some people, he speaks in signs. He'd be like, Lord, show me a sign that you want me to. Now, <laughs> not, don't just be asking, Lord, show me a sign, and then you take something as like, there it is. That's not it. <laughs> You making something to seem like that great car. I knew it, Lord. You want me to have it? No. <laughs> Can I be funny for a second? I remember I was like, Lord, do you want me to have this blue, this blue F-150? And I and like I ain't never seen this blue F-150. And then it started popping up everywhere. I said, it's the will of God. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's me being a consumer and what I've now paid attention to, I see more of. That's what that is. When you think about it, you be like, oh, I, I don't never see uh, that type of car until I started looking for one, and now they're everywhere. Yeah, you just wasn't paying attention to it. I'm a consumer paying attention to what I want, and now it's popping up more often. Same thing in the spiritual. If you pay attention and, and want something, if you say you want to know what a healthy relationship looks like, a re- healthy relationship will start popping up around you. You'll see them like, dang, they healthy, they healthy. I want to be like them. God will surround you with what you are looking for. He'll surround you with what you're looking for. But you'll, you know the only way that you'll be able to see it? If you slow down. God's love is full of pace. Pace to slow down. The last thing, God's love is full of more. God's love is full of more. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a what? Future. Future means something that ain't even here yet. God's love is full of more. This is, this is one of the things that we don't have big faith for. Big, we don't have big faith for this part. More is often only what we see in front of our eyes. I just, oh God, we need more of this. We need more money. I need more of this, more of that. No, no, no. When God says he has plans for you, that's stuff you can't see right now. I was just... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, share something with you. There was a season in our, in our life. Well, there's a season in my life. I'll tell it. There's a season in my life where I wasn't making that much money. And, like, I would go to my account and I'd be like, "Woo, we are thin today. And y'all know how it is. You'd be like, I guess we eating off the dollar menu. Back then it was the dollar menu. I don't know what it's called now. Um, but is it a dollar menu? Oh, all right. That's when the snack wrap used to be on there. Four for four, yeah, whatever it is for y'all. Um, and I remember that there were times where I was like, God, I want this and I want that. And God began to give me what I call vision in a very pre me state. Like, I'm gonna teach you what vision looks like, son. And I used to be like, man, like, I would look at my bank account and I would believe that I would see different digits in it one day. I was like, I'm making 200 and something dollars a week now, but I'm gonna make a thousand and something dollars later down the road. I'm gonna have a house like that. I would drive through neighborhoods, roll the window down and say my name outside. <laughs> Driving in the neighborhood, I roll the window down and be like Lincoln Nathaniel Williams. I'm going to be out here. I drive past car lots saying, I'm going to be out here. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's my car right there. Even to this day, if I know that God has something for me, I will drive past your business and be like, yep, I'm going to have it. Now, that sounds crazy and stupid, don't it? But that's how God wants us to look. <laughs> Woo! 
He wants us to look so stupid and so crazy to other people that when he does it, it'll be like, what is, what is this? It was God. <laughs> it was God. That's the thing. When we realize that God wants the credit for our blessings, then we will depend on him more. He wants our dependence, not our asking can he co-sign on some quick rich scheme. He wants our dependence because his love is full of, everybody say more. more. It's full of more. It's so much more than what we see right now. It's, and I can attest to it because I used to look at a bank account that was dry and be like, one day money going to be in here and it's going to be in here consistently. Consistently. So right now, God, show me how to steward my finances. What do I need to stop buying? Because his love is full of more and God loves me, so I need to see what more look like. What do I need to stop buying? At, and at that time, I was buying a bunch of shoes because I love shoes. And I still love shoes. But I can't let my flesh dictate my faith. My faith is rooted in God. Okay? My flesh is rooted in my flesh. I have to be able, yeah, I have to be able to turn my flesh down and say, there is more for me, and I want to learn how to steward it right now. I don't see six figures right now, but I want to learn how to steward these four. I don't see it right now, but I want to learn how to steward what I got right now. I want, and Lord, show me how to build a business in your, and how you want me to do it. If I need to go get an LLC, show me how to go get an LLC. If I need to go get an EIN number, show me how to go get an EIN number. All this stuff, I need to see it, but I need to see it before I see it first. I can't say that God loves me and not understand that his love is full of more. Because then I will treat God like his love is human love, which our love has limits. I only love you when you act good. I only love you when you do this for me. I only love you when you do that for me. That love is full of no grace. But God's love is full of grace, full of pace, and full of more. Tonight, when you get back home, if you, whatever you want God to touch, go look at it, point to it, and say, you will be whole one day. You will be whole. I don't care if it's your mama's bedroom. I don't care if it's your bedroom. I don't care if you look at yourself in the mirror. Go point to it and say, you will be whole one day. God, show me how to steward what I'm doing right now. Tell me what I need to stop doing right now so I can steward what's to come. If I need to slow down, God, slow me down. And here's the thing. I, I, I don't want God to have to slow me down because it will be in a way that will be the, a hard way. I would rather I get the strength to slow down. Whatever it is, I looked at a bank account and said, man, I don't care if, if zero dollars in here, it's going to be $100,000 in here one day. And guess what? I'm going to steward that too. I've driven past businesses that have buildings that have for lease on it and be like, that's going to be mine. Even if somebody else buy it. It's theirs right now. I watched, uh, and, and, and I, and I got to say it, for, as, as a black man, sometimes it's hard to believe in stuff because it's, it's in a space where I'm like, man, I got I to gotta work extra harder. I know people don't believe that, but you not me. I got to work extra harder to get something simple, to, to get something that means something. But I'm so glad that I said, God, show me that this is even possible. Show me that I can buy stuff that seems impossible. And you know who he put around me and put in my life and showed me? He showed me Pastor Michael Todd. Pastor Michael Todd is just as goofy as I am, black as me, and somebody who had no training in ministry just like me played drums and did sound at his church, just like me. Bought a whole arena and paid it off in a year. So that's like somebody buying Cavelli Center to put their church in, and they paid it off the very next year. 
That's stupid to me. But I asked God, show me that this crazy faith type of stuff is real. And he said, I got you. There he is. You got to believe that God really loves you like he say he loves you. Push past the part of like he sent his only begotten son. Man, that's love. I get it. But look at what the Bible says about how he feels about us. Plans for us to prosper. Plans that will not harm us. So if it's harming us, it ain't God's plan. If it's harming you, it's not God's plan. Plans for us to prosper, not to harm us, and to give us hope and a future. Not hope of a future, but you get hope and a future. Woo! I feel this thing because we are walking around this world thinking that everything that we have in our heads is impossible. But I promise you, if you ask God, please put this around me. Surround me with it. It'll pop up and you'll find yourself writing stupid stuff in a journal and start checking it off as the years go by. Like, I can't believe this even happened. This is crazy. I wish I had my notebook here right now. I would show y'all the dumb stuff in my notebook that y'all would laugh at. But every day, I will put oil on that notebook because I don't need you to believe it. <laughs> I don't need you to believe it. I need me to believe it and my house to believe it. Start to have real belief in how God feels about you. He loves you. He loves you. And his love is full of grace. Stop trying to be perfect. You're going to mess up. Give yourself grace. His love is full of pace. Slow down. Quit trying to rush to everything. And his love is full of more. There is more to now. There is hope and a future. Everybody bow their heads. I pray that we start to really realize God's love and God's character. He is not a man that he will lie. He is a God who will do exactly what he said. If he told you it in your dreams, he'll make it come into pass. If he told you to write it down in a notebook, he'll make it come to pass. If he put it in your heart, it'll, he'll make it come to pass. But you got to Give yourself grace and pace. You're going to mess up and you're going to have to slow down. We walk in the pace of the kingdom, not the culture. So tonight and forevermore, Realize that God loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he didn't just give you hope or a future. He gave you hope and a future. And a future. So God, we thank you for hope and a future. We thank you that you are building us. <laughs> we thank you that you are speaking to us. Give us the grace to slow down so that we can hear your voice. But God, whatever we are desiring in our hearts that is pure, let it start to surround us. Let it pop up around us so that our faith will be increased, not our flesh. Let our faith rise when you put it around us so we can say, if he did it for them, I know he'll do it for me.
And we'll give your name the honor, the glory, and all the praise. And everybody said amen and amen. Give God a hand clap. God loves you just like he loved his son. This is my son whom I love. The beautiful thing about that scripture, Matthew chapter 3, Jesus' baptism. He told Jesus he loved him without Jesus healing anybody's eyes, helping anybody walk, healing any, he didn't, Jesus didn't perform any deeds. And the first thing he heard out the water is, this is my son who I'm well pleased, who I'm, whom I love. Gave y'all a preview to next week. <laughs> So don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word.